So in this course, we're going to be looking at using tape in our production. And there's a few reasons uh, as to which I will use tape in my productions. A lot of the time, it's kind of a reaction against how clean and digital everything sounds to me. A lot of music which is really clean and processed and digital, to me, isn't that interesting. I prefer the scuzzy stuff. I guess it's like a throwback as well, a lot of the time, to like 80s horror. You watch something on old VHS and stuff, it's grainy, it's not as digital and new and looking as good as it could. But there's a charm to that. And I like trying to capture that in sound. One of the main reasons I use tape is to kind of degrade sound and to make it sound warmer. There's ways you can manipulate the tape as well to get some cool kind of sound artifacts. Anything where you get results which you don't feel fully in control of, that's kind of where I shine in music production. As in like, I'm not the one that did it. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm after and tape really buys into that. When we're using this, you're here. Stuff will happen that you don't expect and with computers and digital audio, often things react exactly like you'd expect because it's an algorithm doing it. Whereas when we're talking about something physical, we're looking at the motors, the tape. Even with this tape I'm using, the tape's been recorded over and over again. And as you do that, it physically is degrading and sounding more interesting. Everything about it is a little bit more unpredictable. It's a little bit broken. There are also plugins which can do the same thing as emulators we'll probably open up one of those in a bit just to color the sound to kind of mash things together and again the emulators are great but they are still in emulation right they're emulating this and why would they exist if it wasn't to emulate something that sounded good originally obviously there's tons of different tape players in the world i'm using this one today just because for me it's a really creative and fun way of using sound it's got a microphone built into it and we're going to be using the microphone to record sounds onto tape so we're not just getting the kind of charm of the tape. We're also getting this old school mic in here, which is gonna really screw up the sound. I've got like a double cassette player at home where that's got a much cleaner sound than this. And if I record it, it will be via a line in. That will get a cleaner sound than this, but for me, it's less fun. I could be sitting here with 10 tape players and have 10 different results. But for me, this is where I feel most creatively excited. So the tape I've got in front of me today, I can't remember the exact serial number, but it's a Bell & Howe one. This was originally designed to go with a computer, so it's a computer compatible uh, tape player, but it's got a microphone built into it and that's the charm of it for me. I guess the actual tape itself sounds a bit crap, <laughs> like, and the player sounds a bit dodgy and it's got a load of fuzz and a load of weirdness to it. And all of that stuff is the reason I'm using tape. Like if I wanted a clean sound, I wouldn't be using this. If you're looking at getting a tape player after watching this, for me, it's more fun to go out and try and find one in a charity shop or a secondhand store or whatever. But you can get them online really easily. eBay is probably a good shout. For me, I went as old as I could with this, with what I wanted. And it just so happened that I found this one. And really what I'm looking for here is degradation. I had a tape player, which was amazing to use. And I wish I could have it now, but I broke it. <laughs> I realized that I could take the front panel off, press play, and the reel will be exposed. And I got some amazing recordings. Like loads of my music has got that where I was jamming a pencil in the top of the tape head. And when you jammed it in, it would kind of slow and jitter and make all these mad noises. Try not to break them, but you can use them in all sorts of creative ways. So to operate this tape machine, we've got the record button, uh, rewind, play, stop, forward, and pause. Really basically, we're gonna be using the microphone that's inbuilt. With a lot of tape players, you won't have the mic inbuilt. The reason I've got this one is I love that. But often they have a line in, you can just go out your sound card into it, hit record, press play, and whatever plays in Ableton, if you've got it coming out your sound card, will record into the tape player. A lot of the times I'll just go straight into the tape player to color the sound, and you will get the warm tape sound itself just from recording on the line in. But today we're gonna be using the inbuilt mic from this because um, it's got a much more dramatic sound. And to be honest with you, I really wanna show everyone the processes I use. This is something that features a lot in my music so that's the reason we're going for this we're just gonna play some noise actually out of the speakers turn off the monitoring so you, it doesn't feed back press record and we're gonna record whatever comes out in the room as well as ableton if i talk over it we're gonna get bits of my voice in and then we're gonna look at chopping that up and bringing it back in one of my favorite ways of producing if you've seen any of the other courses is sample pack based so some days i'll go into the studio with this and just make essentially a sample pack out of sounds processed with this tape player and then because they all exist in the same tape world, because they've been recorded by the same source, when you put everything together, you start to get this really amazing sound world. Apart from the standard play, rewind, etc., on here, we've got a volume built in, which it's meant to just be the output, but I think it actually affects the mic input as well. But then only sometimes. But then this is why we like, this is why I'm having fun with the tape, because don't really fully know what's going on a lot of the time. The other thing is it's got a counter on it, which we can reset like this. 
That counter is really helpful for finding the place. So if you've recorded something and it goes to 16, you know from 0 to 16 is your sample. So when we look through it, we can like look for the zeros and the 16s, which is quite fun and very helpful. And then the ALC is an automatic level control, uh, which we've got on, but maybe we'll turn it off, but I'm not convinced it does that much. <laughs> probably helps a little bit. Other than that, it's got an inbuilt speaker, which we won't be using. That's bypassed by putting the jacks in, which obviously goes straight to the sound card. So yeah, it's a really basic handheld machine. It's essentially old school 1980s tape player with a microphone built in with basic controls, but it's quite fun to see what we can get out of them.